burnout. More people are experiencing it nowadays more than ever before. In today's Western world, we are idolizing hustle culture, grinding and constant achievements. Being busy seems to have become a status symbol. I know all about it. When I was 19 years old, I started chasing a big dream of mine. Back in the kitchen. Fitness was my passion and I loved helping others with this as well. What started as a hobby became my job in those next two years. I worked really hard, but I also enjoyed the process. What's going on, guys? At 21 years old, I dropped out of university and I started living the life of my dreams, being financially free, traveling the entire world while helping and inspiring others to get in shape. It was absolutely amazing. Fast forward a few years, things started changing. I was already making six figures, being a solopreneur on my own, but then I started expanding my team. I started different partnerships and contracts with others. In the meantime, I was dealing with struggles that happened in my personal life that I kept all to myself and I didn't share with anyone. Instead, I focused on hustling and grinding even more. My whole self-worth, my identity was tied to my accomplishments, the people I was helping, my team that I was growing, and the likes that I was getting on Instagram. More people started wanting things from me and expecting things from me. I set the standard higher and higher. I started to be driven by overwhelming tasks and completing those, always feeling behind and having to live up to unrealistic standards. Instead of being driven by my passion for helping and inspiring others and being creative. For years I had you know, these stress issues and they became big anxiety issues and also panic attacks here and there. And at some point it became way too much. I got crazy panic attacks and also light flashes during the day. And then at some point I literally collapsed and this was last August. I honestly thought my life was over. I lost my drive, I lost my passion and I thought that I would never get it back. The silver lining of all of this, it forced me to take a complete break. For now, I want to wish you all the best in your lives. I truly do. To look at my inner world instead of constantly being focused on the outer world. Back then it didn't feel like this. I felt weak, I felt like I was giving up. And my worst nightmare became a reality. But at the same time, it learned me the most important lessons of my life. So lesson number one that I learned is to stop saying yes to everything. All right, I was super guilty of this and I think this is the main reason why people get into a situation like this is because you're a people pleaser. At least definitely what I was and so if someone would ask me something I would have a very hard time saying no. In fact, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever told someone no. But that put me in situations where I would always say yes to everything so my, my calendar would be completely full and then when someone would like shoot me a message or WhatsApp or an email with a certain proposal or whatever it was or an idea, I would either say yes or I simply wouldn't answer at all. You know, I would not like sort of like have the balls to say no. That's how I view it now. So I would simply say nothing. And then I would always still be in my head and you know, I, would, I would feel guilty for not answering. So it would cost a lot of energy, right? And that's wasted energy, okay guys? So uh, learning to say no has been a very important process for me. Um, not just for my, my personal well-being, but also in business. You know, as a good leader, you have to be able to say no. And as Steve Jobs once said, it's only by saying no that you can concentrate on the things that are really important. And that was another one of my issues was that, first of all, I was scared to say no, but also sometimes I was always excited to say yes because there were exciting business opportunities. And so I would always say yes to some exciting project or an idea even though I really didn't have time for it and I didn't have energy for it because I already have my businesses, right? So I started up all these different projects on the side with different people uh, j simply because I, I said yes out of excitement, but then I lost my focus, you know, and I got diluted focus instead of laser focus on my own vision, right? And so that's something, those two things definitely for me, uh, very important that I learned how to say no. People see something on, on Instagram, they see a certain lifestyle that people portray and you actually have no idea, and I know this from first hand, you have no idea what goes on behind the face or behind the, the body, the physique, right? And so people only see that superficial level, um, you know, the making money and the traveling and the great physique and, and the girls and whatever it is. But people have no idea how someone feels on the inside. And the reason I didn't share with anyone was partly because uh, I feel sort of embarrassed, you know, to share those kind of things. You, you start to feel weak, even though right now I, I view that completely different. I view it as 
being strong, um, being a man that shares his emotions with others. And I'm not talking about like constantly complaining and that type of shit. Like I don't do that. But it's like just being completely real with people, being vulnerable. Next lesson is that I have to be selfish. I have to take care of myself first. Now that sounds a little bit weird, right? Be selfish. But in order to be there for other people, you have to be selfish. You have to think of yourself first, take care of yourself. Otherwise, you cannot provide other people with your energy, with your love, right? Um, that's not possible if you yourself have no energy to share with other people. And so it's very important that, you know, I take enough rest and that I, you know, go to the gym and take care of my health and that I do all those things and sleep well. Because otherwise, I'm taking up all my own energy, even if I'm completing tasks like for other people, or even if I'm helping other people, um, I will feel drained all the time, and I will not be able to, to do my help as good as I possibly could, you know? So in order to actually be there for others, in order to provide others with service, and as well as yourself, you have to take care of yourself first. Uh, it's, just, it's just a very important lesson that I learned. And so some things that I do right now, you know, is rest more during the day, um, not work for like the whole day, but also take breaks, go for walks in the park, take some time for myself and not always with music on, but also simply listening to the sounds of the birds and just walking somewhere, um, do, you know, forms of meditation and also forms of mindfulness, mindful walking, uh, meditating in the morning and all those different things in order to take care of myself, prioritize myself in a way so that I can also show up and have that high energy and have that passion, you know. And one other thing here also is setting boundaries on my screen time. So not being on my phone too much. And that also directly means setting boundaries and sort of saying no to other people again. Uh, because some people might text me during the day and always, like I was always responding within five minutes, right? And now they will not hear from me during a certain period of the day because I have my phone off and I'm, you know, taking time for myself or I'm working without any distractions, I'm having less phone time, not scrolling on Instagram all day and doing all this stuff. And being out you know, in nature more, or being outside more, and just simply putting the phone away when you're at dinner and all those kind of things, right? Super, super important. Next lesson that I learned is that achievements aren't everything. Achievements are not a substitute for good health and happiness. And me being an entrepreneur, me being a high achiever, I always fell into this trap again of believing that once I would achieve something, I would be happy. Once I'm on the top of that mountain, I will be happy. But there is, I will feel good about myself, but there is always the next thing to chase. There is always another shiny object, another achievement to be done. And when people start clapping for you, you feel like you're on the right path. You wanna continue doing that, right? All the dopamine hits that you constantly get. And you know, all the approval, right? And so that's sort of like the life I got into and I stopped sort of like being appreciated for what I already had. And it was always about wanting more and never really standing still and being so grateful for the things I already have in my life. And you know, the opportunities I've been given and it's life in general. And right now, uh, every single morning, I write down three things that I'm grateful for. And during my meditations, very often in the evening, on different days, I just wish certain friends, I imagine them in my head and I wish them happiness. And I do a lot of different sorts of these meditation practices that have helped me even more, like just be more grateful in general for life, for the people around me. And that this drastically changed my life, you know? And some of these achievements are also making money. Many people think once you make money, you will be happy, all your problems will be gone. And I actually got way more problems, you know, the more money I started making. And so there's definitely, there's definitely a point where money will make you more happy if you don't have a lot of it. But then once you get to a certain point where you really have enough to live an amazing life and have freedom, I can tell you guys that the more money after that, it will not necessarily aid your happiness. For me, it definitely didn't. You know, it got to me actually being unhappy because I got more problems than I could handle. And that, you know, it's, it's, it's not that money is bad. Like I, I wasn't able to, you know, handle my life and all these different situations. So the burnout is not like, it is something that obviously um, I'm like, I'm the reason why it happened in a certain way. Uh, so I cannot blame it on anything else. It is, you know, me constantly wanting to achieve bigger things, wanting to prove myself. Like no one asked me to necessarily do that. So it's also a bit of an ego thing, you know, I'm right now learning to let that ego go. I realized that, you know, back in the day when I just started everything and I was also making, you know, good money, way less than I am now, I was way happier, you know, I'm more, more, more satisfied, more grateful and so yeah, I feel like right now I'm really getting back to like the true roots of what makes me happy. And I think that's so important, guys.
Another big lesson that I learned is to really let go of my trust issues, something I was really struggling with because as I got more successful many years ago, people started wanting more things from me and some people made use of that in a negative way. I'm not gonna get into that in detail, but it was you know, a lot of things that happened with different people. And so I sort of lost my trust issues and I only trusted a close circle of people around me. And so in my personal life, that led to me not making any new friends and not really hanging out much, and like being alone a lot of the time, you know? And after this burnout, I started, you know, realizing that, you know, not everybody wants something from me. There are also good people in the world. You know, I started sort of losing that trust. And right now I've made, you know, so some new friends or some new connections. And that is awesome, you know, connecting with other human beings, even if it's just having a random chat on the street with a stranger. I, I love that stuff. And I didn't do that for, for quite a while. And that's actually something I really enjoy. So I got that back and I also had those issues in my business. You know, as an entrepreneur, it's very difficult to outsource certain tasks, you know, and that's something I've always struggled with, but even more during these past few years because some stuff happened. And then, um, you know, I just had a hard time letting other people do my things because I felt like, you know, I can do it the best or like they can never do it as good as I do. So it's part of an ego, ego thing. And then also you have to, you know, realize if someone starts new, you have to, you know, give them some time. You have to teach them all the stuff that I've been doing for years. Of course, you cannot really expect someone to, to know that all directly, you know? So it's, it's about investing in people, trusting people um, is so important. And it gave me a lot more rest, you know, in my head, right? And um, in my business and in my life. So it's amazing. I'm, I'm super happy and obviously still cautious, but you also have to let the trust in. Combination of both. It's been a crazy year, guys, full of ups and downs mostly downs this year but sometimes that happens you know and that's also part of life but i do feel like you know it's, it's been six months it's not been that long even um and i feel like i've already learned so many lessons and i get to know myself better and i am still working on myself you know i'm i'm not there yet but the question is you know will you ever be i don't think so in life you always keep growing and keep learning new things and i feel like in a way this whole situation has been a blessing for me. It's kind of a strange way to look at it, uh, but I really feel like it has. And uh, right now when I start talking about these things, I realize that I've learned so much about myself and maybe that I can help others with as well to just share it and just also preach the message, which I think is the most important amongst men is that it's it's okay to open up. You know, it's it's okay to, to share your struggles. And I think most men, you know, they, they feel like I did. They feel like they can't share anything and they just want everything to look perfect on the outside you know I use Instagram and social media and I like always make it seem like you're doing great and things are okay and that's the life that I was living for a very long time you know and um, it's, it's putting on that mask you, you don't have to you know you you, you you can create a connection with other human beings other men and it really is possible and if, if you don't have anyone to share your story with I would uh, invite you to leave a comment on this video let me know if you've had any mental struggles how you're dealing with it I'm, I'm really curious to know man I'll respond to every single comment I hope you guys enjoyed this different type of video today let me know if you did and please give it a thumbs up if so see you guys in the next video much love peace out looking back again i can get it i can make it yeah i know it and i'm never looking back again yeah never looking back again i can get it i can